Hi, good afternoon. My name is Fabian Pfortmiller. I'm an entrepreneur originally from Switzerland and now living in New York City. Um, and today I want to talk about success. Um, in my most recent startup called Holsty, as Brian mentioned, um, we've been thinking a lot about success. What is success and what kind of success do we really want? And I want to take you today on a little journey on like, what have you learned about the different kinds of forms of success and where do we think we still have more to learn? Um, so I'm the last speaker here today and it's probably in a long afternoon. So if you just want to hear the 10 second version of what it is, here it is in one word. Success is, it's complicated. <laughs> it's really complicated and it's kind of a big roller coaster. My roller coaster started in May 2009. It's a beautiful Monday morning and we're sitting on Union Square. I'm there with my two co-founders, Dave and Mike, and Dave and Mike that morning decided to go and quit their jobs. We want to start a company together. We started making t-shirts and we feel like, you know what, if you just do this as a part-time thing, it's never going to work. Let's, take a, let's take a leap of faith and make this a full-time thing and we'll see wherever it goes. And as we sit there, we're all kind of shaking. We're like, okay, this is really happening. This is really happening. Um, we say, so why are we doing this? What do we want to get out of this? Um, and the first thing that comes up is this huge magnet. This huge magnet is financial success. And it's like, you know, power or success. And, and, and we think about that. Is, is that what we want? Because I think that's, that's where it's pulling us. This is kind of where, this is where we usually would go. And we realize, no, I think that's not why we quit our jobs. This is not why we're here today at Union Square. And um, we say, okay, let's define for ourselves what we want to get out of this. And what comes out of it is 17 short sentences that just came out of our hearts and our minds that say, why? Why are we doing this? What is it that we want to achieve? What is success for us? And what will make us happy? We think, you know, if as long as we have that as a compass, something that's going to show us where to go, I think we should be okay. And so, if you look at success, kind of where we stand, I think it's, it looked a little bit like that. We were running towards a cliff, pretty much, because we had about savings for about a, for about a summer. Um, and, but we felt okay about it, because it was just the three of us, and we had this manifesto that would guide us. So we're off to the races, um, we, we're making t-shirts and they're so happy and um, they have little pockets on as you see. Um, that's also why we called Holsey because they're, they're t-shirts with Holsey position pockets on. And, um, and this is kind of our first head of design, it's the grandmother of Dave and Mike um, <laughs> as she's making our, our first prototypes and this is Mike carrying our first box of t-shirts ever. Um, and this is our little banana stand on Union Square where we were actually were selling the t-shirts. And um, you know, we were selling some t-shirts, not a ton, um, but we just kept going and we kept going and we kept going. At some point we decided let's make more products and we made wallets out of plastic bags from the streets of India and we, we just kind of scraped by. And the summer was over and we decided, you know what, let's continue. Um, and we continued and, you know, we were doing okay, but it wasn't like it, nothing, nothing major happened until this guy came along. Um, this really happy guy, his name is Jan. He's a friend from Switzerland. And he came to help us out for a couple of months. And his job was to look at our, our analytics and our web traffic. And he comes to us and says, guys, there's something very obvious happening. Like everyone is on your website looking for your manifesto for those 17 sentences. You guys should just print that on a poster or like, you know, make a mug out of it or something. And you know, we did what we always do when someone gives us good advice, we ignored it. <laughs> um, and, um, and him in his like happy ways came back one week later and said, no guys, I'm serious. It's like, it's real, like people are looking for this. And we kept ignoring it because I think that's kind of like the best thing we knew to do. And, um, and after a while, we just, he kept coming and kept coming. And we said, yeah, well, okay. Even if it's just out of pity, we'll give it a try. And so what happened was that it turned out to like, we made it into a beautiful letterpress poster uh, that, we, that we make with some, uh, local printers in downtown LA, and um, and it kind of went through the roof. 
and we were selling a ton, a ton of t posters, and suddenly it started p to be everywhere. Um, from like little, um, f we got photos from little apartments in India. Suddenly, some pets had our uh, manifesto. Bathrooms had our manifestos. Little babies were forced to read our manifesto. <laughs> um, you won't believe it, but there's like we have a whole collection of like people who tattooed our manifesto onto their bodies. And I remember when we uh, when we posted the first uh, photo of that on Facebook, my mom called me and was like, "Are oh, you guys kind of creating some kind of cult, or what the hell is going on?" <laughs> um, and but it was really beautiful how it was just like, you know, spreading all over the world. And Dave and Mike's sister, she lives in Kenya. And um, we had sent her one of our posters, and she took it to a local uh, framing store. And as she walks in, she sees, of course, what? A copy of the manifesto. And she's like, where do you have this from? And she says, I found this on the internet. They said you should just print it out. It's so positive. I love it. And, you know, yeah, that, that was, was kind of like two worlds colliding. It was, it was really beautiful how it started to spread. And I remember the day in November 2011 when Mike comes into the office and says, guys, you won't believe it. We're in the Washington Post. Like, Washington Post, why? <laughs> um, and said, they call us the new Just Do It. And we kind of look at each other, and I guess we smile, and we're like, wow, okay, I guess this is it, huh? We made it. This is, this is, this is, you know, this is the success. We made it. We're like, everyone is having the manifesto. It's kind of, it's everywhere, and it's like, this is, this is it. Um, and I remember how a couple of months after the article, I was speaking at a panel at Columbia University, and um, I was together with a group of um, the CMOs of Fortune 500 companies. I was thinking, like, why am I there? And what they wanted is to me to talk about, like, how do you use, how do you use inspiring words to sell more stuff? And, <laughs> and I, I said, I said what, I, what I could say, but then I was sitting in the subway after the talk, and, you know, I, I felt really empty. And I felt kind of strange because I was like, why, why did we do this in the fir first place? Um, why did we do that? We had this moment of clarity with this manifesto. Where did that go? And, you know, wherever we would go, people would like see us as the manifesto people. And we had come out with all the products. We had started making all the beautiful posters and cards, but people just ignored it. Like throughout like 2012, we tried to sell other products, but everyone just wanted the manifesto. We were like this band who had this one-time hit, <laughs> and it's like 10 years ago, and you move on, and you make much better music, and you get invited to all these concerts, but all they want you to play is this old song, and that's how it felt, you know? Um, and I think for us it was also that suddenly people were asking, so what's next? What's the next big manifesto? Where do you guys go? And, and you know, kind of what's, what's, what's coming? And, and we didn't know. We didn't know, and like it, it got super stressful, and we, you know, by now we realized also that, oh, actually we weren't on this stable like happiness thing. We actually were back on the cliff. <laughs> we were actually definitely back on the cliff. We were running towards the cliff at high speed, and you know what? The cliff had become much higher because suddenly we had a big team. Suddenly we had a nice office. Suddenly we had like inventories. Suddenly we had to like all the stuff to care about. Um, and also, we didn't even know anymore how long, how far away we were from the cliff, because at the beginning it was a summer, but now, who knows? Would it last a year? Would it last five years? Would it last a week? How long lasts success, you know? It was very unclear, and it was very confusing. Um, and honestly, so at the end of 2012, I went home to Switzerland to spend the, the winter holidays with my family and to take a break, and I remember I was sitting in that airplane, I was feeling exhausted. I was feeling so tired and exhausted with all this, like, thing, you know, like, all these, all these worries. Um, and we had started us with this, like, good intention of, like, creating a company around asking why and, you know, having our lifestyle be there, but I definitely wasn't feeling happy. Um, and while I was in, on, on holidays, I met some of my high school friends, and we had lunch together, and, you know, some of my, my high school friends, they... They, um, they've chosen different career paths. Some of them have more, more, normal pa norm, more normal careers, I would say, that they have a nine to five job, they earn probably about 20 times as much as I do, um, they have real vacations, um, they go skiing every weekend, um, and, um, 
And, you know, I was like, hmm, I'm this entrepreneur, and I have, like, I have all these passion and whatnot. They're probably jealous of me. But you know what I was really feeling? I was feeling like that sounded really nice. That life sounded like really kind of like that comfort and that stability and that, I don't know, that sounded really nice. Um, and I went home and I, I was like all over and I was like, you know, should I even get back to New York? Is that like, where am I? And I met one of my, my mentors and I told him, you know, I'm not sure if I want to get back on that airplane. I'm so confused um, because we've been thinking about success and we thought we were so smart about like, you know, we asked that why, but we're so confused. <laughs> we don't know where to go. And he told, me, he told me two things that really stuck with me. First, he said, you know what? Ignore the cliff because it's always going to be there. That cliff, if you do something that you believe in, it's always, always going to be there. And you'll never know how long it takes until you kind of run off the cliff. And he told me the story of the red balloons. And the story of the red balloons is that you're swimming. Um, but because you decide to go on your own path, you go under the water. You swim under the water, and there are those red balloons that are full of air. And you go and you grab them, and you <sighs> fill up with like life and with hope. Um, and whenever you get one, you don't see the next one, but you just keep swimming, and you hope, and you trust that you're going to find the next red balloon. And I was like, wow, that sounds like a nice story, but you know, I'm a bad swimmer, and I hardly can open my eyes on the water. Like, <laughs> what does that mean for me? And he said, well, you know, stupid, you have like, you have like written down what your red balloons are. You've written for yourself how to find your kind of red balloons. You just have to go look for them. They're not going to like come to you. You have to go and look for them. So on that note, um, I, I took that airplane. I went back to New York City. Um, and he was right. You know, once I started looking for those red balloons, I saw them. And the biggest ones were the most obvious ones. You know, our, our manifesto has been shared over 150 million times online. That's a number, I guess, that sounds big. Um, and you get some air out of, that, out of that red balloon. But the more I was looking for the red balloon, I, I, I realized, you know what, size doesn't matter. There's, for example, we have a part on our website called My Life, where people who've read the manifesto and whose lives has changed as a consequence of it, they quit their jobs, they got into a new relationship, maybe, they started new projects, they published their own stories. And reading each one of those stories is like a red balloon for me. And as I was looking for red balloons, I realized, you know, sometimes it only needs one person to give you kind of a red balloon. This is my mom. And um, I realized that, you know, one of the biggest red balloons for me is that her friends really love the manifesto. And her friends really love the work we do at Holsti. And that makes her so proud. And making your mom proud, what a better, better balloon could, could you find than that, you know? Um, and we also realized, you know, at some point you also have to kind of create your own balloons. Um, because if we have a certain lifestyle we want to leave, um, we, we have to live it very actively. My mentor was right, you can't just wait until they come to you. Um, and so we believe in that food is important to us. So we started cooking. Um, and every Thursday at our office, we host a lunch, if you're ever in New York City, on Thursday afternoon. Um, and we love hosting people and sharing food with them. For us, traveling is extremely important as our lifestyle. So we started taking our whole team for one month a year to a different place and work from a remote and usually much warmer place uh, than New York City. Um, we started to think differently about consumerism. You know, I think when we, when we thought about our values, we realized that we didn't want to just push products on people, um, but we wanted to encourage a more mindful form of consumerism. And this is, for example, our web page on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, where we shut down. We shut down our website and we encourage people just to kind of go and spend time with their family. Um, and I think the nicest red balloon we found was actually realizing that we loved providing little red balloons for other people. That that was what we, what we were so passionate about. Um, and we, we started making artwork for people as little reminders throughout their lives 
to kind of make them think of what they already know and what they believe in, what their dreams are. Um, and so, as you've seen, kind of our success was a huge roller coaster. It went up and down, and it keeps going. Um, and I think it was a good idea to start with the manifesto, to write out what we believe in, to know why we're doing it. But it turned out it wasn't enough. It needed for us to kind of understand also that, first of all, we would always be running towards a cliff. We would always, if we had our own dream, be running somewhat down towards a cliff, and we could fall down any time. We just had to accept that. And the second thing was that success was not going to come in that one flat moment where we just we made it, but instead in those tiny little red balloons, those tiny short moments of success that didn't come to you, but that we had to go and find. And once we were looking for them, they started to pop up everywhere. So on that note, thank you so much, guys, and have a great day.